Okay, hi there. Let's take a look at how you can use the concept of welfare loss uh, when you get a question on negative externalities from production. So this is a classic uh, topic, uh, pollution, congestion, waste and other forms of negative production externalities. The key is to be able to show the welfare loss that results from a market failure. That's very important to getting top analysis marks in your exam. So let's build up the model. We have cost and benefit on the y-axis and we have output, quantity produced and consumed on the x-axis. Here's our marginal private benefit curve, essentially uh, the benefit curve to the individual producer. And here's the marginal private cost, otherwise known as the internal cost curve. That's the internal cost to the producer of supplying the goods and services. The market is in equilibrium. We call this the internal or the private optimum, uh, where marginal private benefit and marginal, uh, marginal private cost intersect. By the way, I'm assuming there are no externalities from consumption in this analysis. So the output is Q1 and uh, the market is in equilibrium in that sense. But then we build into the model the existence of negative production externalities. There might be some waste product generated. There might be some air pollution, noise pollution um, of some type, which means that there's an external cost, which we add on to the marginal private cost to give the marginal social cost, which equals private cost plus external cost. So at output Q1, there is an external cost of production. Now, if the market does not take this into account, then there's going to be a market failure and a potential welfare loss. Ideally, uh, if we took the externalities into account, the equilibrium would be to the left of Q1. That would be an output of Q2, where the social cost meets the benefit curve. Uh, in other words, we've factored in, we've taken into account the negative production externalities. But in the absence of that, if the market is not at a social optimum of Q2, the market may well end up at a private optimum of Q1. In which case, output is above the level which we perceive to be needed for a social optimum. Now, at Q2, there is an external cost, the vertical distance between social cost and private, uh, private cost. And there's a market failure in the sense that the output is too high for society's welfare to be maximised. So how do we show the welfare loss? Well, I've put some letters on here to help us. If we're output Q, uh, Q1, then the social cost of... So let's go back to Q2. Any output beyond Q2, beyond or to the right of Q2, the marginal social cost is bigger than any benefit. So in that sense, we're losing welfare. Uh, there's overproduction. Market failure is the gap between Q2 and Q1. And at output levels beyond Q2, marginal social cost, if you move up the marginal social cost curve from A to B, that is greater than any marginal private benefit from A to C, leading to a welfare loss. So therefore, uh, the, sorry, the social welfare loss is the area A, B, C. The social welfare loss is the area A, B, C, due to market failure. Now, that welfare loss area will get bigger the greater are the externalities. So what I've done here, if you compare this slide with the next one, I've made the externalities significantly bigger. So there's an even greater divergence between private cost and social cost. Let me go back a slide to show you there. So the welfare loss is A, B, C, because output is too high at Q1 relative to where society would want it to be. If we increase the depth, the scale, the external cost of our externalities, if I go from, from that curve to that curve, you can see there's a huge gap now between social cost and private cost. The private optimum is Q1, the social optimum is Q2, and that welfare loss diagram gets even bigger. The welfare loss is A, B, C. So if externalities get worse, you can develop your diagram and say, well, there's a potentially even bigger social welfare loss in terms of the deadweight loss of, of welfare. Uh, 
And the welfare loss comes about because the market is not reaching a socially efficient or socially optimum output. We'd prefer to be at Q2, where we take some of the externalities into account. If the market ends up at Q1, you end up with a big welfare loss. However, uh, it might be the case that uh, you, you manage to reduce the externalities, to bring them down. Obviously, an example would be things like maybe a switch to uh, significantly cleaner renewable energies or firms manage to bring become more efficient, dynamically efficient in terms of their production, creating less pollution, less externalities. So if we can lower the external cost of production, for example, via a switch to cleaner, more renewable energies, then the market failure is reduced. The gap between marginal social cost and private cost is reduced. And hence, the welfare loss area of A, B, C is lowered. So the key point here is to get the right diagram showing social and, and private cost uh, diverging, but to bring into your answer the concept of the welfare loss. If you do that, you will score higher marks for analysis and you'll deserve them. So thank you for joining in this video.